And you know, the, the funny thing is, is that I'm filled with rage all the time at the injustices that I see across America. But God forbid that I were to act on them. God forbid, even if I were to go on television and have anything other than a gentle smile on my face, right, that's right. then I'm the one that's labeled as the angry black woman. And I'm the one that will end up on the FBI watch list, right? You have these people that literally... You know, ju- uh, again, the QAnon shaman this week <laughs> yeah, just <today>. was was <laughs> just was was sentenced 41 months in prison for attempting to violently overthrow the government. These people were chanting hang Mike Pence after they successfully built a guillotine mm. on the steps of the Capitol. There are people serving 41 months in prison right now for marijuana charges. Yeah. N- which now is a billion dollar industry, and yet they are in jail. How do we not have stricter, stricter penalties for attempting a coup? You, you, ever, you ever see this great movie called History of the World? And uh, Mel Brooks plays a uh, French king, and he goes around in, in, the, in the movie in one of the segments, and he just does anything he wants. He grabs a woman's ass. He, he, you know, he slaps someone. He eats a grape. And each time he does it, he looks at the camera and goes, it's good to be the king. I just remind just like that that image is just in my head because it's good to be a white criminal. It's yep. good to be a white killer. It's good to be a white man because I, I dark humor is necessary. I imagine if I could get like a bunch of black and brown folks, let's just say I got a bunch of black and brown Muslim men who have a lot of facial hair, like you know, white hipster beards, and we got like, I don't know, say a thousand to uh, safely and peacefully protest uh, gun violence uh, and go to the US Capitol. All I see is chalk lines on the ground. Like, I like I can't even imagine. Like, and suppose yep. we spoke Arabic and Turkish, and we said peaceful things, and maybe someone said Allahu Akbar, which means God is great. You know, Allahu Akbar. We live in America. Like, can you just imagine what would happen to us? I mean, there would be a forceful, violent police law enforcement presence. Some heads would get cracked. Somebody would get arrested. Somebody would get shot. And on Fox News, it would be, look at these crazy darkies and Muslims who are swarming and taking over the country, right? Meanwhile, we got the January 6th violent insurrection. We got the McCloskeys. We got Kyle Rittenhouse. We got Eddie Gallagher. I got to bring this guy up because people don't talk about Eddie Gallagher. Eddie Gallagher, for those of you who know, is the white Navy SEAL guy who brutally killed the 12-year-old boy ISIS captive knifed him and he was such a freak and violent sociopath that his own teammates uh, on the navy seal testified against him he is now a hero to their right right wing and was Mm -hmm. pardoned by trump so you got eddie gallagher rittenhouse paul Mm -hmm. gosar the Mm -hmm. mccloskeys Mm -hmm. the generous insurrection the message here and if rittenhouse and the arbory killers go free is open season your Open white season. rage and your white grievance can be exercised. Stand your ground. Take out your gun. Shoot to kill. You will have no consequences. We're going to go back to 1952 in the South, where if a black kid gives you a lip or if he allegedly whistles at you and his name is Emmett Till, mm-hmm. you can get the entire town to hunt him down, kill him, mutilate him, torture him, lynch him, and you will get off scot-free. That's how America is great again for those folks. I'm keeping it blunt, guys. I'm keeping it real. That's what we're looking at. You know, because to me, and here's the thing, because this, to me, Waj, ties back to the right's boogeyman of critical race theory, Mm -hmm. right? The reason why, and again, let me just remind people, critical race theory is not a thing in K through 12. It is something that is taught at the graduate level. It's something that is taught in law school. And we touched upon this last week. Yeah, I took it in the law rea- school. I told you guys. The, the reality is this, that I don't even think a majority of Americans, if you were to poll them, do you know who Emmett Till is? Mm. If they would even know. Because the goal here has always, always been to whitewash our history. It's why after each and every violent and cruel act that is done at the hands of a largely white male group, right? The reason why it is allowed is because, and people say, this is not who we are. It's my favorite mantra that people love to tweet out. They love to say on the news after every single, oh, Trump rips away, breastfeeding children away from their 
undocumented mothers. That's not who we are. Where the hell were you over 400 years of slavery when we were breaking up enslaved African families, Mm. right? And selling them. Mm. Where were you when that was happening to Native Americans? But because we don't teach it, because we don't teach it with radical honesty, and instead we fill our history books with euphemisms, right? And the idea of American individualism and, and cowboys and patriotism, and we don't tell the truth, that you can say something as naive and stupid as this is not who we are, when it is all that we are is violence, when it is all that we are at the foundation of this country is cruelty. And because we don't examine white rage, not as a way to make excuses for it, but as a way to identify a pattern of behavior, Mm. we consistently relive these stories and they get worse and worse every decade. That's the power of story. I'm so glad you touched upon it. There's a great quote by a Jewish American poet named Muriel Rukeyser. And she said in the 20th century, she said, the universe is made of stories, not of atoms. And human beings Mm. are universal storytelling animals. And I think a lot of what we touched upon is exactly that, is that the story of America that this country, not just Republicans, has been taught to believe is a fiction. And once someone tells you that your universal truths are manufactured and a myth and fake, what does that do to you? It unmoors you. It ungrounds you, right? And so are you saying that I can no longer be a victim, that I'm the aggressor? And you're saying there's something called white supremacy that is part and parcel of the American project? And you're saying that the American dream was never realized by people of color because of their skin tone or their national origin or their their, their ovaries? And you're saying that the myth of exceptionalism doesn't work and that not, not everyone can come here and pull themselves up from their bootstrap and there is systemic inequality that we have to confront that I might be complicit in it. No, no, no. That's too much. You are completely shitting upon the American dream and the narrative. You are telling me something that is so radically different from my concept of my vision that I cannot even think for a moment to to even indulge in it, to to dip my Mm -hmm. toe in it, as you said, to the point where I will not even read the 1619 Project. Coincidentally, I just got my copy today, came out, because... It so fundamentally shatters my misunderstanding of this country. And if it shatters the misunderstanding of this country, it shatters all the myths, all the propaganda, all the talking points. And then I will be forced to have the uncomfortable conversations about race and white supremacy. And not just that, literally investigate my role in either perpetuating it or being against it. And so it's much more comforting for me to cast myself as the Mm -hmm. victim. Kyle Mm -hmm. Rittenhouse, Mark McCloskey, the wealthy Loudoun County, Virginia parents. And instead, you are the villain. You BLM folks are the terrorists. You black and browns who whine and complain make everything racialized. You guys are the race hustlers. And that's why, in order to save this country and save the story of America, we have to ban CRT and Beloved and 1619 Project. It really, you touched upon something very, I think, um, deep, and and, and I'm not trying to be metaphorical here, it's the story. The story of America is being threatened, and the protagonist of America, or the historical protagonists of America, are coming to terms that they might also be the antagonists, and this is a reality that they're violently trying to rewrite as we speak. Um, You know, one of the things that you bring up to me is, you know, and and are a reinforcing is around the story, right? It is around the propaganda. And I love that you use that word because as a former educator, I taught first and second grade back in Washington, D.C. when I lived there. And before I transitioned to the Hill to work on education policy. And I used to say, and people would roll their eyes at me, that the biggest perpetuator and tool of white supremacy is our public education system. Mm. Because if you were to create uh, generations of critical thinkers, right, those that would examine the story of America and why only a collection of people are upheld, 
right? And why everyone else is ignored. Why you will know the story of Susan B. Anthony, but not the true story of Sojourner Truth. While you will know who, you know, you will know the story of Benjamin Franklin, right? But not the story of who created the, the, the filament, right? You will <laughs> learn like it, 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 it it's, um, it's mind blowing because for every white person, that is celebrated in our history as an innovator, right? As a, as a liberator, as an mm. abolitionist. There are legions of black and brown people who were purposefully erased. Excised. From that narrative. Yeah. And it's the question that, we're, that we need to be interrogating now is to whose benefit and why? And once you are aware of that truth, Right. Once you once you dare I say are woke and conscious to that truth, you can't go back to sleep and say to yourself, oh, well, you know, it is what it is because it is what it is because people devised it to be that way. 